What's going on, everybody? You're back with the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. This is episode number 65, and it's a little bit different than the rest because we have a guest, and his name is Mr. Robert Waterhouse. How are you, sir? Very well, and thanks so much for having me on. It's, uh, I'm sure you'll... Well, he was laughing the other day when he asked me to come on the podcast, and I was sat there doing uh, check-ins on the laptop watching your YouTube channel. So, ultimate fanboy, unfortunately. <laughs> so, unfortunately. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And the reason I said things are a little different than normal is because uh, Robert is natural. Robert just turned uh, pro in men's classic. Uh, at what show was it, Robert? So it was the uh, Two Bros Pro, which is the UK, I guess, like affiliate of the IFBB. Um, okay. So it was, yeah, the Two Bros British finals because obviously of covid um, they couldn't run qualifiers this year, so it was just an open British show. Anyone could jump in and do the show, basically. Yeah. So you are a pro in a different federation, correct? Correct, yes. So I won my pro card back in 2013 uh, with the British Natural Bodybuilding Federation. Okay. Um, and so I've been competing as a pro. When you turn pro, you become a DFAC pro, which is a drug-free athletes coalition. So okay. uh, I've been a pro since 2013 with them. So if you're a pro in that federation, and I think it's an obvious answer, but I want to ask you anyways, what made you want to become a pro in the IFBB and why, and how did you, how did you think you would fare against guys who aren't natural? Okay. So um, I, I guess I wouldn't really say that that was the goal, if I'm honest. Um, mm -hmm. Like it was always like, you know, thrown out there and talked about because, I think when people understand with classic physique, you know, it's very much criteria compared to bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, and like, since it first came on the scene, people were always like, you have to do classic, you have to do classic. But you know, I'm, I'm bodybuilder at heart. I've been, you know, bodybuilding since like 2008. I've done, you know, loads of shows and it was always just kind of like, that's where it was. Um, yeah. The reason I never did earlier shows was because the qualifiers never felt early enough. So it just kind of happened this year that it was like, right, I'll jump into the show because the actual British Grand Prix or the DFAC Grand Prix was it's in seven weeks' time. So effectively, okay. I was preparing. That was my main show. And okay. this one was almost a warm-up to a certain degree. <laughs> so a warm-up and you walked on and got your pro card. So yeah. if you yeah. get your pro, you, so now you got your pro card as an IFBB pro. And I don't know how, like in my mind, the IFBB is the premier league for physique competitions, whether you're natural or not. I just feel like people look to the IFBB for those physiques. Now, I guess if you're natural, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, I guess that sounds a little arrogant because if you're natural, is there a federation that people look to more so than the IFBB? Um, it's very much split and just taking you off. I 100% agree with you. Like, I mean, I've had people message me say this week, there's like two real main natural federations that people look at. One is the WMBF, which okay. is, actually what federation Kai Green used to compete in before he turned IFBB pro. Yeah. And he then got the DFAC, which is probably the equal one. And there is a few other ones as well, but they're the kind of maybe the most recognized ones of caliber of athletes. Okay. Um, so when I won my pro card at the weekend, people were like, oh, you've got to crack the WMBF pro card now. I'm thinking, why on earth would I effectively go back a step? And that's no right. disrespect to the WMBF guys, but you know, the IFBB is the pinnacle. So, okay. you know, why would you kind of go back to, to do that? So, okay. So sense. please correct me if I'm wrong while we're talking, because I don't know, I'm going to come out flat out and say, I don't know anything about natural bodybuilding. So if I say something that sounds a little off, it's because my, I'm looking through the lens of the IFBB and that's kind of been my stream for the last oh. 20 years. So that's all I know really. Um, yeah. But okay. So it's good that we, Got to figure that out. So even in natural streams, the IFBB is still considered the premier league of physique competitions. Yes. 100%. Okay. Yeah. So now that you're there, are you still going to do the uh, DFAC or are you going to go on uh, to do the IFBB shows that are coming up? Um, I will 100% do the IFBB shows. Um, I think that it's, it's a difficult question because I don't think you can even do both, if I'm honest. I yeah. think that it's not very well looked upon if you was an IFBB pro and then you go off. I know like all that drama that was with Lee Priest when he went to do yeah. NABBA and tried to come, like, so more yeah. than likely, no. Yeah. Um, and also from a kind of completely, maybe selfish point of view, or I don't know what right words to describe that, but like 
I wouldn't want to risk getting beat by another natural competitor as an IFBB. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's like that then becomes like a really big scalp to take. And I just yeah. think like, why would I put myself in that position as a classic bodybuilder? You know, it's, it is two different things, whether people yeah. want to believe it or not. Yeah. So I want to show people what you look like really quickly, because uh, sure. for those that don't know you, I want them to see kind of your physique and what it looked like when you turned pro. So this is Robert's uh, Instagram, uh, Bob Waterhouse 86. So check him out there. But this is, is this a physique you got your pro card with here? Yes. Yeah, that was the last weekend. So it's a week ago now. That's, I wonder if I can blow this up at all or maybe get a better photo here because it's a little far back. That's all right. uh, this one here. This is last weekend? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, you, that's really shredded, man. Like, you, that's, a, that's a really good job, dude. Like, so... Well, the real kicker is that, same again, without sounding arrogant, this is, this is me at probably about 55 90%. Well, that's what I was saying because you said this was a warm up, so this isn't even your best, is it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was good enough with the shape, balance, conditioning. Um, but same again, as I said, there were guys in that show harder than me. There were guys in that show bigger than me, way bigger than me. Yeah. I mean, in overall, there was a guy called uh, Jimmy Tonkinson who was seventy pounds heavier than I was. That's a really good flow, though. I mean, this this shot shows your physique better. I think. This shot makes you look a little bit uh, straight here. Where I mean, it's a beautiful pose, don't get me wrong, but this really shows your physique a little bit better, I think. Well, they say classics all front of a bicep, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, you have. So you're competing against guys who are not natural, and you walked away with the win. That's pretty really impressive. So okay, so there's a lot of stuff. There's so many questions I have for you. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because I get natural guys messaging me that watch the podcast that I make little cracks about natural guys here and there. <laughs> not, not because, not because I actually have more respect than you, you could imagine for guys who are natural. I just, my, uh, I think guys who are enhanced are annoyed by guys who are always preaching that they're natural. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If you're natural and you and you have an amazing physique, I have more respect for you than anybody. But it's the guys who run around, you know, we're holding oh, the, the holding the sign, home. holding the sign that they're they're natural, right? Uh, so I make little remarks here and there. But when people asked um, about having a natural guy on, I thought you were the perfect person to have on since you just got your pro card in IFBB. And I have a million questions about the process because. Every time I come up with a video, whether it be about off-season eating or whether it, become, whether it be about dieting, people always say, well, that doesn't count. You're enhanced. And my answer is always, there probably are some differences, but tell me how different it really is for you versus somebody who's enhanced. Let's say, let's narrow it down to getting as shredded as you got when you're eating your meals are you using condiments, for example? Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, I think, I think it's kind of without sort of blanket statement. It that there's with a lot of natural bodybuilders. One, it, it takes a lot longer to get in shape. I would say yeah. Or yeah. across the board, most people diet for a lot longer because okay. you haven't got tools in your locker that you can put in. Uh, yeah. to make you a little bit harder or to bring fat loss along uh, with anything that really works to a certain degree. There's obviously some exceptions. Yeah. Um, I, I would say that one thing that's really notable when you go to watch a very high level natural show is that the level of separation that people have between muscle groups. And, I, yeah. and I'm not sure why. I mean, yeah. I've, I've spoke about it on a few podcasts and stuff before. Yeah. And obviously, you know, like if you go down like the lower levels of bodybuilding, untested shows, you'll tend to find if a natural turns up at them show, it'll be one of the most conditioned guys in the show. Yeah. But when you then get to your level, of course, it's a different ball game altogether. Like yeah. no one's coming in, Phil Heath shredded in the natural show. Like it's, you know what I mean? It's that combination of fullness, muscle mass condition. You'll often get guys and there's obviously some exceptions as well, but you will tend to find it. it Maybe some of them are a little bit stringier than others yeah. when they are shredded. Yeah. But, to be fair, at, at the top of the natural pros, um, like there's some super impressive physiques. Like, sure. as I said, for me, I mean, I'm a lightweight pro world champion, 
but like I've been beaten in the overall twice by is a guy called David K. Uh, if you want to find his Instagram, like he is exceptional. And another guy called Nathan Williams. So they're both pro overall world champions. And there's a long list of people. Um, but I mean, this is just to like, you know, to kind of show people like, you know, how good these guys are. Let's show, um, let's show them. This is David so, K. This is David K. So this is me and him. <laughs> Me and him started uh, bodybuilding together in 2008. He beat me in the overall when I was a junior and he was a novice. And yeah. we've been good pals ever since. Uh, he has beaten me in the overall in Worlds. He beat me at the Grand Prix. Um, so for me, like that physique, like something like that is, you know, that's what we're talking about at a pro world level. Like that's so, really so off the bat, what I notice is this. So you're right about the separation being greater. And the dryness being better. And that I think that's a result of obviously no androgens and no water retention from any, any drugs being used, obviously. Um, that's, and obviously, again, you can see like there's no lumpiness in the shoulders. There's no lumpiness in the glutes or the arms or anywhere that, you know, normal, an enhanced person would do their shots or anything like that. You can see everything's very clean. All the lines are very clean. Um, but like you said, I don't think naturally... Uh, this guy would ever be able to get shredded and as full as a Phil Heath or like a professional bodybuilder would be because, or, or an enhanced bodybuilder, because to get this level of conditioning, how low are you going in calories? Are you guys doing more than we're doing? Or are you like, so, like, like, walk, like walk me, walk me through, walk me through your diet. Like my diet is 16 weeks and I might start at 5,000 calories and end up at 2000 to 2,500. And now obviously that's going to be related to my weight, but like, is your, are you have, do you have a similar structure or what is your setup? Um, I'm a little bit of an exception because I'm a fat kid. I really am. Uh, like I, I put on fat very, very easy. I have a real hard time losing body fat. I mean, the, the show that I did this year, I mean, it took me, I started my prep in September last year and okay. I really didn't kind of like now kind of condition until say, till kind of where I am now. Um, so guys who keep it tight in the off season, maybe like a David Gale, I just showed what you just showed. Um, I mean, across the board with all the pros, they are very, very high carbohydrate consumption. Okay. Very moderate protein. Um, so to kind of give, give you my diet, if you like, um, my carb cycle, uh, okay. but my high days are around four to 500, sometimes 600 on like weekends, Monday, Tuesday. And they come down carbohydrate wise. That lowest they go is about two hundred. Okay, that's not bad at all. Like it seems like the extremes and bodybuilding and enhanced bodybuilding would be more because I know guys like on their high day are doing eight hundred to a thousand, and then on their low days are doing like my low, my low days are like sixty grams. Yeah. So, so that's that's, the, that's a really big thing. I think that I mean I've got obviously clients who compete. You know, assisted i've got friends who compete assisted and as i said like i'm a massive fan of bodybuilding first of all but there's definitely some differences you see you guys will just retain muscle better i mean obviously yeah. for what the job of anabolics is to do is to allow all them things to just the muscle to stick on the frame better yeah you yeah. know as i said it's maybe not so many tools at disposal but you don't tend to get like i guess guys who are like maybe on that lower carb if if you know some natural guys did that and that lower carb it would be like waste of weight and nothing yeah, and yeah, it would be yeah. like you know so just stringy and like mm, go on. sorry sorry so basically what i've established so far is two things one you have to diet longer like if you're let's let's try and uh give people a general idea of numbers so when i start my diets i'm usually 40 pounds over contest weight is that oh, around yeah. is that around where you are or more? Um, I was near enough 60 pounds over when I started. On purpose? Mm, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> um, I, I've, always, I've always done off-season this way. Um, yeah. I, I don't have a sweet tooth. I don't have a problem with junk food. Um, I just eat a lot of calories. Um, I probably don't do off-season cardio as much as I should do. Mm -hmm. um you know I, I enjoy my training i have a reasonably active job i mean we're talking like maybe eight to ten thousand steps a day not extremely active but i'm on my feet a lot just yeah. not move yeah um but yeah i would say that like same again i'm probably a bit of an exception like a, i put a transformation video up today from the start to finish and you know we, we're talking like that's a, like nearly a 38 inch waist 
like down to like a 29. So this so, is this is your transformation video. This is you yeah. now. This is you in the off season. Uh, height of off, the off obviously. season. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, right at the end before I start prep. <laughs> Jesus, you love to eat, eh? Holy shit! <laughs> no. This so, is uh, great. I'm probably not giving a uh, you know a, a true reflection of most natural bodybuilders to be honest, but this is the way I've always done it. It works for me, and I like to lift big in the off season. I like to eat big, and to be honest, I always think the main goal of off season is to come back and prove. So the That's day right. I maybe retire from bodybuilding is maybe the day that I don't push my calories like that in an off season. Can I tell you how much I love this? Because this flies in the face of everything I get. Every time, <laughs> no, no, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because I'm exactly like you. This is how I am in the off season. I like to eat. I like to get big. I feel like the job of the off season is to put on muscle at all costs, even if it means, even if it means I got to get up to thirteen to fifteen, sixteen percent body fat. If I put on ten pounds of muscle that year, then it was worth it. So we have the same philosophy. Now, the thing is, when I talk to people about that, and when I do videos about that, I get a whole, inevitably, I'll get an entire group of natural guys who will be like, well, you can only do that because you're enhanced. And natural guys can't do that. And now you're telling me natural guys can do it too. Rubbish. Yeah, absolute rubbish. I mean, obviously, there's some genetic components to it. But I think, you know, a lot of the time, it's people are willing to really like, push the food because they're worried about what they look like and how they feel yeah. like for yeah. me like i'm a i'm a fitness consultant for a job so we market health clubs all around the uk now you've got doris to come and join a gym and she sees me turn up with a you know 38 inch waist <laughs> like maybe it's, maybe it's not the best at advertising for um you know for for people joining gyms but for me, I can always take it off. I always give myself enough time. And as I said, guaranteed, if you, there's another picture I just put up yesterday of a 12 year transformation of um, basically a front of a bicep post uh, picture from every year that I competed and it progressively gets better. So that's, that's I've never- This one here. Uh, so that's from 2008 as a junior is 22 years old. Here, yeah. Uh, 2009, 2010. 2013 which yeah. was the change from low carb dieting and sacrificing to make weight for a lightweight to yeah. high carb dieting 2013 yeah. and then 14 16 17 and 20 and you can see you know it's crazy as you can see here did you start eating more here because in 14 these four pictures look you like you dramatic you got dramatically better to me yeah so the 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 off-season uh, carbohydrate consumption went up massively. The previous ones were all very high protein. Back in 2008, I was having 400 grams of protein a day and about 50 grams of carbs. Back in these photos very here. First, yeah, yeah, very first picture. First three, the, the one in the green trunks is the first year that I switched to a high-carb diet. I took a two-year off-season and I went high carbohydrate, moderate protein, moderate fat. Were you still getting heavy in these off-seasons back here in these early ones? Yeah. <laughs> The one, the off-season picture, there is actually one you'll really like on my Instagram with a, a lint chocolate button in my belly button. Um, <laughs> where, where is that? I was, I was about uh, 111 kilos. Keep going down. Um, <laughs> and that was, the, that was the biggest I ever got in an off-season, um, which was, you know, pretty comical, really. Like, everyone was like, wow you need to diet 100, 111 kilos i think is like 240 pounds 230 pounds somewhere in there it's, how tall are you yeah. how tall are you Something like that uh five foot eight and a half that's pretty big for a natural guy man 240 we have to, we have to give me a, uh, <laughs> oh my God, is this it well that's my first show that's uh 2008 i'm 22 there 100 100 kilos or so this is what i looked at like at 22 this is exactly what i did at 22 years old i looked just like this it was like my off season um but yeah you'll have to, have to find that picture because it is pretty comical and people will laugh for sure um, I, I gotta find it somewhere cute so okay so let's let's do this so okay so that that really makes me happy that you're saying that because I, I i can never dispute natural guys i don't like to tell them they're wrong because i'm not natural and i don't know enough about it to say they're wrong but i feel like the body's physiology is the body's physiology and i feel like if you want to get big you got to feed the muscle and basically what you're telling me is you're natural and it's what you've done and it's worked for you. So how, how much stage weight would you say that you increased? Um, 
this is the real kicker. Since 2008, yeah. I, I was heavier as a junior as I am now. So you haven't increased your stage weight that much. I'm going to have to, we're going to have to, Almost, people, people yeah, are going to have to, cool, yeah. that's cool, yeah. People are going to have to go on and find it. There it is, there it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, is. sorry, let me go back. Okay. I just, I got to it? Uh, yeah, you were just on it. Um, Where is so, it? There it is, that one there, right in the center of the screen. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was, uh, that was, I say, about 111 kilos, start of prep, and then uh, that year there, that picture there is just before I won Worlds in 2016. What's, so, the, time, what's the time difference here? About two years. Uh, no, the actual prep time was about yeah. 10 months. 10 months, okay. So that's the... So, so far I'm, I'm realizing that that's the main difference between us is I can get as fat as you, but I can get it off in four months or three months if I, if I really want to. And that's one of the main things that you said, I think that is most important for people to realize is I can suffer. See, it's weird. It's because people think it's easier if you're enhanced, but it is and it isn't. So it is because like you said, I have something that's going to speed up fat loss but it's also harder because I'm suffering more. Like I reduce my calories much more yeah, dramatically. It's all relative, than right? it's all relative yeah. to body weight and how much muscle yeah. you carry. I mean, I'm sure if I carried around that amount of muscle, you, you're going to be, you know, your energy expenditure and, and the maintenance it takes to keep yeah. that muscle is a lot more than what I have to do. No, you know? but, what, but what I mean is like when you're dieting, you said the lowest you'd go is 200 grams of carbs. And you're doing that because obviously without the gear, you're going to lose a lot of muscle if you drop, if you drop too low. Yeah. Whereas I can actually drop my food down to nothing and still, and still maintain my muscle. So my day, my days suck. Like I'm suffering more, but I'm getting leaner faster because I can, I have the gear helping me hold onto my muscle. So that seems to be the main, um, the yeah. main, the main difference so far. Yeah. So you're putting on 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds in the off season, taking you 10 months to get it off. Is it worth it? to take 10 months? Cause some people would say, Hey, Bob, you know, or Robert, it would be better if you put on 25 pounds and dieted for five months. Do you know what? I've tried it and I was miserable. So I always just think I just do what I enjoy because I, I love bodybuilding. Like I'm the biggest bodybuilding fan. Like me and my mates still have like an Olympia party every year, you know, yeah. we'll have yeah. race rounds, watch Olympia. And it's like, you know, it, it, I live and breathe the sport, but but really, as I said, it, it's, I did it in 2014 and everyone was like, you're a pro now. You have to walk around like a pro all the time. And yeah. it meant keeping a six pack. Yeah. And the calories I had to consume to do that were very minimal. We're yeah. talking like, I was getting fat on like 2,200 a day. And I was like, Whoa. so it's, it's kind of like, you know, for me, I'd rather just do it the way I want to do it. I spend the time I invest that, you know, that, that length of prep. And I said, it's, I'm always better. So until, as I said, you know, maybe as I get older, maybe the skin won't go back the same. Um, you know, I'm 34 now, so I reckon yeah. I've got some good years ahead of me still. Yeah. So maybe that will change. Um, but otherwise, as I said, it's just kind of doing it the way I want to do it. And, you know, that's, that's up mm. to me. Well, I like your philosophy because, it, like, it's, like you said, if it works, it works. And if you enjoy it, that means you're going to keep doing it. Because – you know, a lot of people say that to me, like, oh, why do you get so heavy in the off season? Why don't you stay leaner? Why don't you? And I'm like, why should I suffer when I don't have to? Like, if I'm eating the food I want to eat and I'm getting out of shape, but inevitably I am in shape when it comes to showtime and I've also put on five or 10 pounds of muscle, why, why, do, why, am, I, why am I making myself suffer in the off season? And exactly that. I mean, I've always said it, like, it really doesn't matter what you look like unless it's on show day. If you're mm. fat two weeks out, it doesn't matter because as long as you turn up on show day and you're in shape, no one can take that away from you. And you know, the results speak for themselves. So, you know, if someone wants to have a little, you know, chip at me for being fat in an off season, like I'm cool with that because yeah. I know that I'm still going to beat you when it comes to show time. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I want to get into some of the, the more nitty gritty of, of your diet. And I asked you this sure. earlier. So and this is what, I don't know why this is on my mind all the time, but I use a lot of condiments when I'm dieting. Yep. Do you, are, are natural guys like, are you guys so strict that you use condiments or you're not using condiments? No. Definitely a lot of condiments. Yeah. And like, I prep people for shows and they're all using all sorts from, you know, mustard, hot sauces, uh, yeah. salt, pepper, and, and you know, all the, uh, we have like short seasonings over here. You've got like Miss Dash and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Like in an abundance, I'm a big believer of like from 
follow a lot of Stan Effort and stuff about, um, you know, sodium content and it's yeah. one of the best things you can do for performance. And I'm a big believer in that and seeing the visual changes of that. So I think that's one thing that helps you to maintain staying full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We always have a bit of a saying is that conditions nothing without fullness. So, so it's kind of, yeah. What about what about things like ketchup and barbecue sauce and stuff like that? Are you avoiding all the calorie stuff? Uh, I use a uh, low sodium ketchup. We have okay. like the fifty percent one and then the like really low one, no added salt or sugar. Barbecue sauces, no. Um, in, unless they could, I could find one that was a zero cal one. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's you know, you can easily add a, a Ronnie Coleman four hundred grams of carbs <laughs> to your diet a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right so so condiments wise we're the same because i'm i'm in the same boat like i do some uh no sugar added ketchup i don't really do any barbecue sauce frank's red hot and maybe some mustard at times so that we're the same um as far as food sources i'm sure everybody's diet's different so let's just use yours for example we're not going to speak for everybody um are you doing a lot of fats or is you are you primarily carbs and protein it's, it's mainly carbs uh i'm really bro if anyone's probably going to be you know annoyed with that in this day and age um bro, so si bro, bro science is welcome on this channel by the way cool cool <laughs> uh so pretty much i'm oats for breakfast and eggs uh i'm white potato sweet potato uh chicken and steak and oats before bed that's that's pretty much my diet post-workout is uh you know glucose a, a really good way hydrolyzed way or way isolate okay um that's pretty much it. It's about as Wait, exciting. Yeah. You're not doing any added fats, are you? Like, are you adding any peanut butter, olive uh, oils, Udo's things like oil. that? I use Udo's oil in the uh, okay. in contest prep. I always kind of, it's always like my go-to. But I want like a, as good a source as I can get, if that makes sure. sense. Sure. Just little things. Is where, where I guess you call it bro science, but like my skin is better for using it. Yeah. No, I get I'm it. Not or anything, but it's like you know, it's just the actual texture of the skin is like glossy. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. So, what's your what was your stage weight? uh in pounds 165 pounds okay or 74 kilos if anyone wants to know okay so what i'm trying to figure out some more differences here so protein protein amounts what would be like how much protein are you taking in per day so um and this is this is pretty big across the board as far as a lot of natural guys that you know are in my sort of circle of friends and good level natural pros one gram per lean pound of body weight Okay. So that's yeah. So home for me, 170 grams is pretty much what I keep it at. Uh, yeah. That's not that abnormal, actually. I know a lot of pros, like a lot of enhanced pros, are starting to actually lower their proteins now. Yeah. There was there was for a long period of time, like when I started, there was a there was a thought out there that you had to do two grams per pound, and I was doing like 500 grams of protein a day, and it was like, I think. I episode yeah. that you're talking about it so yeah yeah so i think i think people are starting to realize that you don't need that much i think we're still going a little higher than one gram but it doesn't seem like they're we're that far off on that either um yeah, but i think you'll utilize it better and yeah. that's a, that's a, that's a difference as well you know you're going to be able to you know we always say that you're sort of making up the rest through carbohydrates and you want you know your body to be able to use that efficiently whereas why would you want protein then to then sort of be converted to glycogen for use it's kind of a you know, a long process around it, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, for enhanced, like I said, you can get away with more because you can utilize more. So yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. So on the carb side of things, you said four or 500 on a high day and uh, 200 on a low day and you're doing a carb cycle. So that is a little different in the sense that, like I said, it's not as extreme, um, but we're still kind of in the same ballpark. Like we're not, you know, yeah. and, and, I, and you know what I say, it's not as extreme, but it, I, when I think about your weight, it's actually the same. I don't, I don't know guys who are 170 pounds or doing more than four or 500 grams of carbs a day. So on a high day. So I don't think that's that different either. So, so far, what I've gathered from this podcast is that there isn't that big a difference between natural and enhanced as far as work ethic and diet. And do you know what we do tend to see, uh, cause obviously we compete internationally. Um, we do see that very much the UK guys are very much pro high carb, pro moderate protein, and the American guys are still low protein. Uh, sorry, high protein, low carbs. Yeah, it almost just seems like the, the the way that sort of like trends with, with diets. Uh, but I always say like any guys at the top of the sort of pro ranks in the natural fed, the majority of them are high carbohydrate consumers. Okay, okay. Um, what about training? So when you're natural. Like for me, I can get away, and this is this might be another thing that has to do with being enhanced because I can hold on to my muscle more. So, I I can get up to 
two 45, two 50 minute sessions of cardio plus my training in the middle of the day. As a natural guy, are you doing that much cardio or are you pulling it back? Uh, well, same again, that I guess would be dependent on what you, how far out over stage weight you are. Uh, if I take myself as an example, uh, anywhere up to an hour and a half a day, I was just okay. walking mostly. Yeah. Um, I did notice that towards the end of prep, my legs disappeared a little bit. Yeah. So I kind of like back on the step mill, reduced that down. Um, especially like now after, you know, doing my first show and I've got first pro show in seven weeks, mm -hmm. I'm just all on the step mill, like 20 minutes a day now. Like it's, it's reduced a lot. Now I'm in shape. Yeah, but yeah. to get that majority of weight off, yeah, hour and a half a day. And, some people, you know, sometimes you've got to do what you do to, to yield a result, really. So I've never yeah. sort of shied away from doing big amounts of cardio. Okay, so that's not, that's not very different either. Now, let me ask you this. So I have recently pulled my cardio for the same reason you just said, like my legs starting to flatten out a little bit. Yeah. So I pulled my cardio out completely and I started doing two-a-day training sessions. Yeah. Um, so I'll do like, you know, shoulders in the morning, arms at night chest in the morning, back at night, that kind yeah. of thing. And, and I don't, do, I don't do any cardio. So basically I've replaced the calorie expenditure with weight training. Yeah. Is that something a natural guy could do or is that way too much for the body? Uh, yeah. You'll like this because yes, I've done that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 2016, 17 preps. Um, as I said, my job, I don't start till 10 o'clock in the morning and I finish at eight at night. Okay. So for me, rather than just going home and sitting around on the couch, I'd be like, right, well, less cardio, I'll do two weight sessions. So I'd do small body parts in the morning, um, bigger ones in the evening. But probably on reflection from how my prep has been this year and how my strength has been during my sessions, I've trained far less this year time round. Um, and I felt like uh, I held on to a bit more fullness, a bit more size, and I weren't getting as burnt out. I think that's the thing I looked on reflection, how I was sleeping, um, sometimes even just from taking like, you know, high stim pre-workouts and even and training and then going to bed and doing it all over again. Um, but I just found that I didn't quite have that same recovery ability when I was doing the two sessions a day. Yeah. And at the time it felt okay and it was yielding a result, but it's only now maybe down the line where I've gone, actually, it's probably better for me to just do one, you know, heavy, hard weight session a day, do my cardio yeah. and then kind of rest up, you know? Yeah, I gotcha. So what about the training itself uh, during a prep? Is it like if I do uh, back, for example, I'm doing like 16 sets, right? I'm going to get in there. I'm going to do 16 sets. Probably I would say six to eight of them are going to be working sets, yeah. right? The rest of them are feeders or warm ups or working warm ups, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then the other six to eight will be the failure or hard, hard sets. Is that also similar or are you doing something different? Um, yes, a little bit. Um, I think that my volume over the last maybe seven years or something has like increased a lot. Okay. I always used to be very kind of like low volume, like let's all follow Dorian's kind of, you know, let's do two sets and go home. Um, but you know, I just love training so much that I found that I was getting a better result from doing a bit more. And it, it's very similar to what you just talked about. We're talking mm -hmm. maybe not every set's a working set, but you know, um, as you said, maybe eight out of, 20 sets or something would be yeah. like proper working sets. Yeah. Okay. So why is there so much, you know, I, I guess I'll turn from the X's and O's a bit to the mental side of things. Why is there so much hate from natural guys to, and I'm not saying yourself because obviously you're a bodybuilding fan, but in general, there's so much animosity towards guys who are enhanced. And when, when, you know, we're breaking things down, it honestly doesn't sound like your program is very different from mine. And the only, the only things that sound, the only things that sound different are simply because I, I weigh more than you do, but this, the, the, the structure of the programs is similar. Absolutely. I think that, you know, when you're enhanced, it just allows you to do things on a bigger, better scale. Really. Yeah. They said, I mean, take yourself. If you, if you just said like, you know, back in the day, you just continued on and just like, you'd still be a very good natural bodybuilder. No doubt yeah. about it. It's yeah. just the fact that you've not had anything to be able to allow you to get to that next level and retain more muscle, recover from workouts quicker. I just think that in the natural community, you'll tend to find you've got two people. You've got someone like myself who is very much a bodybuilding fan. I don't go to shows, sit there riding around on my natty high horse and <laughs> thinking like, wow, look how fucking great I am because I don't take gear. Because I said I'm a bodybuilding fan in general, but there's... Yeah. 
other people who don't want to choose down that path, but they just feel like, you know, they've probably not got very good genetics in the first place. They probably oh. haven't got the work ethic as well. So there's just an easy get out clause to say, well, it's all right. You can do that because you're enhanced. But actually a lot of the good bodybuilders don't feel that way. So I get it. So it's not necessarily as natural versus not natural argument. It's more of a secure versus insecure argument. So the guy like the guy like yourself who has figured out their body, who looks good, who knows how to train, who's made it to a high level in his federation can respect the things I do because you've done them also uh, just on a smaller physical scale. Yeah. Um, and the guy who sucks, who can't get his body figured out, who can't grow, who can't put on muscle or doesn't have the work ethic yeah. is pointing to the steroids just to make himself feel better. Is that kind of... Exactly. And it's like... I mean, it leads really well into kind of like, you know, the whole fake Natty argument. I think that if anyone has spent over a decade with decent genetics and like, you know, applied themselves to bodybuilding, you should look good at the end of it. Yeah. Like I've been training 20 years. So I expect to be looking half decent after the <laughs> time I've put into it. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Maybe guys is like this day and age, maybe it's a little bit more of the instant gratification of like, right, I've been training two years, I want to look good, and you just look that way because you're on gear. But, okay, you could maybe make the argument, could I have got to the physique I've got now a lot quicker? Probably, yes. Yeah. Um, but it was just kind of like I was, I was doing pretty well with it. I had some really good amount of success very early on, and I just kind of, you know, went with it, really. So Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, Natty versus not, and I guess I want to touch on that a little bit because I know there's people that are going to be watching this that – and this, this again, I think goes to the secure and insecure argument is the guy who can't get to your level naturally probably is pointing at you going, that guy's on gear. He's lying. And, exactly. and, and what exasperates the problem is there are a lot of guys that do natural shows that aren't natural. And that's kind of, I don't know if it's like that in the DFAC, uh, but, you, but it's probably no way, no more, not as much as you think. And the reason why I say that without kind of going off on a tangent is that if you're in, involved in sports like the Olympics or whatever, where you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake with regards to s commitments with, you know, contracts, whatever, then yes, I can understand it. But like for me, I just think, what is the absolute point in taking gear, mm. doing a natural show, beating a load of guys who are not natural for a plastic trophy? Like, I, do you know what I mean, you're not getting prize money out of it. There's no, there's no rewards that way. I think you're seeing yourself in the eyes you're seeing yourself through the eyes of others and it's not it's it's amazing so i've coached probably i don't want to say thousands but i coach hundreds of people right and in my time coaching i can't tell you the amount of people who've messaged me and said i want to do a natural show can you help me do it while i'm on gear <laughs> i'm telling you i'm telling you the truth i know it sounds messed up and i know you know what you're logically you sound right you're like why would anybody cheat yeah. There's no money. There's no money. There's no sponsorship. There's no, like, you're not getting anything from it. It's just a trophy. Why would you cheat? But people want to win. And it happens all the time. Like I am blown away at the amount of people who would message me and I, I wouldn't respond. I would just delete it because it, it irked me to my bones. Cause I was like, if you're going to do steroids, I don't care. I do steroids, but just do it. Like just compete with yeah, the guys. Right. That, you're yeah. an untested fed. Like for, right. as, there's no, there's nothing to gain really in bodybuilding at that other than, you know, maybe to put on your Instagram two times natural champion. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But as I said, like who really cares in the, the day? I think yeah. that, you know, it's a, yeah, so, it's, it's a whole subject. I guess you can. So really going, but going back to you though, let's, let's leave other people aside. Cause I think there's probably, I think there's probably more people than you think. And you probably think there's less people than I think. So we'll just, we'll just leave that one alone. But um, how do you feel like, how often do you encounter that? And does it bother you because you are natural and you do work your ass off and you have figured out your body? Does it bother you or do you fluff it off? Like who gives a shit? What, as in like the, the fake natty? Like, like when somebody says to you, oh, you're lying, Robert, you're on steroids and I don't believe anything you're saying. And you only look like that because you, you took gear and you're lying to everybody. I think, uh, well, the first thing is that we, are, we have a bit of a joke among some of the, like, the top pros and it's like, you've not made it in natty bodybuilding until you've reached fake natty status. <laughs> it's like, 
you know, if you're any good with any level of muscle. That's like, hilarious. And, and as I said, like before, if you've been doing something over a decade, you've got decent genetics for bodybuilding and you don't have a really good level of muscle by the end, then you're doing something wrong. But, but secondly, I just, I just can't understand the logic that everyone will apply this to all other sports except bodybuilding. So, for example, you want to become a marathon runner and you're going to beat Mo Farah and you're going to do it naturally, whatever. Um, you could train all your life and you're never going to be a top Olympian in marathon running because your genetic makeup doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah. Whereas for bodybuilding, it's like everyone's like, well, you know, I'm just going to the, I've been going to the gym for two years. I've made like zero progress. And they're like, oh, well, you must be taking gear. It's like, yeah, but I also then can't become a marathon runner. I might not be able to, you know, play some of the other sports. So yeah. people just don't want to accept that, you know, genetics do play a role with that kind of stuff. So Yeah, yeah. So at, at the end of the day then, do you – did it bother you at one point and now you've learned to kind of fluff it off or is it something that yeah definitely yeah. when i was younger um maybe it's just a maturity thing i don't know but like you know i would go out on a night out in my spray on t-shirt and uh you know people spray on t-shirt steroids, steroids. Yeah. um i used to have the you know right defensiveness about it um but as you said you know you get to that point where you're like well i almost expect you to think that I'm on gear because I look decent. So it's kind of, it's almost like a backhanded compliment now. And I'm sure there's, you know, there'll be loads of people who watch the podcast. They'd be like, no chance, no chance, no chance. Because, yeah. you know, when you've been involved in bodybuilding and you maybe you've gone to local shows or whatever, and if you've never been to a top natural show, I guarantee anyone who doesn't really know much about bodybuilding would never guess that these guys were clean because they yeah. are that good. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that would really surprise a few people who've maybe been to shows and, it's, yeah. it's you know it's something else really a top level pro world well i um i will say this I, it's not hard to believe that somebody can get to 170 pounds of muscle yeah. that, that's not that's not overly massive and no. and um what might be hard for people to believe is the conditioning and i'm not saying i don't i i honestly believe you 100 percent and i i i take nothing away from any of the of you guys of the top pros like the guy you showed me just now also very very impressive I think the average person doesn't know how to get that shredded. And they're like, Robert's got to be taking Clen. He's got to be taking thyroid drugs. He's got to be taking, there's no way he got that shredded naturally. Yeah. What can you, what can you tell those people? Like, do you even bother telling those people anything? Do you even bother? No, I just think, especially if you're experienced and you know, you've been to a natural show, like 90% of the competitors are in shape. Yeah. At any good level. If you go to a British finals, like we had uh, like last two years, like the lightweight, middleweight classes, and now even to a certain point, the heavyweights as well, like absolutely peeled out of the brain. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's, it's you know, I, I don't know, as I said, whether it's to do with, as you talked about earlier, like how much maybe the muscle cells swell. It, it, it kind of like, you know, like you look at some people's like rear double biceps on like a, you know, a IFBB pro stage and there's not that level of separation. The details aren't there. Yeah. 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 So, I agree. You know, whereas with the natural guys, you do like, yes, it's a lot smaller, but you will get good muscle separation. So good muscle separation. And then also having like, you know, a good level of like sort of lean, you know, thinness to the skin. Yeah. Like you will look shredded on stage. Yeah. So, you know, as I said, it's one of them, but, um, Without good, yeah, I guess it's just, it's kind of a hard thing to know unless, you, unless you've been to a lot of natural shows and you see, yeah. oh, there must be something in this because everyone's in shape to a certain degree. Yeah. Are, are, the other guys, are the other guys at the top of the natural, natural scene, are a lot of them, because we're talking about security and insecurity. So I'm assuming these guys are all, you know, they all have great physiques. Do they all respect uh, open bodybuilding or do they, are some of them, you know, very, very, very 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 mixed i got you know yeah. i've got friends who bodybuild naturally who don't even know anyone's name in the ifbb yeah but do they if they see it are they is it laughable to them or do they still get no, that it takes cool. work no 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 i think i think you know they, they you know they would you know kind of i wouldn't say they would like watch the olympia but they will be in awe if you know if you saw someone at a, a body power expo with yeah 23 inch arms you're going to be in awe of that and that's mostly across the board would be kind of impressed with that no, never any really like anyone who's any good like snubbed at like look at this guy takes gear like yeah 
that doesn't really happen, I don't think. Well, no one that I know anyway. I'm trying to bridge the gap between natural and enhanced bodybuilders because I feel like there's like this rift. And I, and I, I, think, I think open, or, or sorry, not open, but enhanced bodybuilders should respect natural bodybuilders a lot more because it does take, I feel like it's not more work, but it's more calculated. Um, like I said, I feel like we, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we can get away with a little bit more, like you yeah. said, because I can get leaner faster and I can hold on to my muscle a little more. I think well, you have to, you have to exhaust some of the other avenues a bit more. Yeah. It's like, you know, as I said, you haven't got, I mean, I mean we, we can really put that into like, you know, for fat loss, because there is things that are going to make you harder and things like that. So yeah. you don't have many tools at your disposure. I guess yeah. is the real word. Um, yeah. Yeah. A bit longer. But yeah, as I said, it's. Uh, okay. Uh, so as a natural guy, I want to get into career. So is there, now that you're an IFBB pro, I mean, is there something in your mind that says, you know, I'm going to look for sponsorships. I'm going to make this like more of my career, or is it still like it, like when you, you said you have a job as a, a, not a fitness instructor or uh, consultant. Yeah. Consultant. We, we basically, we, we, it's sales and marketing, really. Is what okay. It is. So if you're in sales and marketing right now, and is there something in your brain that goes, you know what, I want to do this full time? Or is it still just kind of a thing you love to do? Yeah, I'm pretty much in transition as it is anyway. With I, I coach clients. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I also prep myself as well. Okay. So I don't have a coach. Um, so I would like to be able to do that full time. Um, yeah. Now that would mean, I guess, like I might have to do some personal training on the side, maybe some uh, like posing coaching as well. Um, but really, as I said, that would be, that would be kind of like the dream, really. I'd love to be able to, because I love coaching as well. So yeah. if I could do that, that would be great. But as far as uh, like shows and everything are concerned, like, you know, I, I say I'm just, you know, I love bodybuilding. I think I'll compete no matter what. So um, if I can do something on the side that's tied in with it, then great. So if you're a food guy and you love the off season, because I can tell you're a food guy, how often do you get to, like, how do you compete? Like once a year, you kind of bunch all the shows together at once, get it done and then get fat again. Or is it like. Pretty much. Um, I mean, I've done lots of times I'll do two or three years on the trot and mm -hmm. then take a break. Mm -hmm. um, and then I said, I'll maybe do like a one year off season, two year off season. I think the, the best progress I've made is when I've had two years off. Um, but I think maybe at this age, I think that maybe I haven't got as many two year layoffs. Yeah. That's a long without, time without wasting my yeah. best years. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even like, even when I think about having year, I've only had one off season where I had a full year off and, uh, even that felt like I wasted time. So, um, how, how many clients do you have right now? Or how many clients do you normally coach? Like on average? Uh, about 25. Okay. And it's, do you. I'm sure people are probably wondering this. Do you make your clients get as fat as you do in the off season or are they <laughs> stay no, leaner? Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't want the headache of trying to get him to take it off, to be honest. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I mean, I said across the board, like obviously you get people with better starting points than others. Um, I think maybe when you're, people are being coached that way and you're maybe not as accountable when you prep yourself. So maybe yeah. that's some of it. Like I'm not sending anyone a check in each week and then yeah. go, you're fat, you need to go on a mini cut, you know, yeah. whereas maybe some of that stuff, it's a bit more regimented and like cheat meals are more structured. And I think people like that accountability in an off season for them. Okay. Um, and probably they don't have the fat gene like I do as well. So. <laughs> so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a real bodybuilding podcast if I didn't ask you about cheat meals. What's your go-to, what's your go-to food? And I, I know it's hard to narrow down, but like if you had to. Well, I'm definitely like five guys is quite big over here. Uh, yeah. Like we did the show last week, and that's why I had, it was actually pretty disappointing, which I was pretty upset about because uh, for whatever reason they just took the hell out of the burger. Um, but I'm, everyone always laughs, like saying that I've like Domino's Pizza membership over here. So, <laughs> um, so that would that would be my go-to. Uh, I just tend to I've found over the years not done them as often as I would like because I just find it's the repercussions after the cheat meals of something like that, which I just feel terrible the next day. Yeah. So I definitely stick to a little bit cleaner and not quite as high calories. So that's what, that's kind of what I was asked. So right now you just did a show and you're still, you're going to get ready for another, are you going to get ready for, uh, I, which, I, which IFBB show are you getting ready for? So, um, a little bit of a backstory with it. Uh, there's a guy who comp competes in a 212 called Jamie DeRigo. Very okay. good bodybuilder, prepped by Chris Aceto. 
He was over oxygen for a time. Um, he is launching a um, member subscription uh, like website and like, you know, where you can obviously follow all his content and everything. Yeah. So they're becoming like, they're putting on uh, the British Grand Prix. Uh, it's called the Rego Raw. It was just on the Instagram post. Okay. Um, so they're putting a 212 show on, uh, I think open bodybuilding and also men's physique, classic physique. Okay. So, uh, that's going to be the, the first show that's in Watford, which is like two hours from my house. That's where I competed last weekend. When, when is that? Seven weeks time. So you just won last week. Yep. So what is the diet? What does the diet look like? Okay. Well, first, how many cheat meals did you have after you won? Just one. And then back to work. Yeah, back to work because same again, uh, this years of experience, you know, in times before it would, you'd have two or three meals off and then a few other bits and pieces. And then it takes you two weeks to get back to where you was. Yeah. And I just, I don't want a headache to be honest. I'd rather just like, I already had my brain set up that I was competing in this show, which is in seven weeks um, in the natural show. I was already planning to do two or three shows back to back, but since yeah. winning the pro card, that's kind of thrown everything out. Yeah, but you but like you said, you're already still in, in, in diet mode. So Yeah. So when you're doing your regular diet, does it go back like how much do your calories increase from the week before the show to now? Um, so yeah, like quite a, a fair bit. I mean, my carb cycle, as I said, where it kind of ended up on like two hundred a day, I've done pretty much a full week of four fifty every day. Okay. For the last week. Uh, I gained five pounds. I've dropped two of that since starting kind of lower on yeah, uh, yeah. like 400 yeah. uh, on Monday, Tuesday. And then I'll say, I'll tape it down again through the weeks because I really want to be able to sort of push a bit more conditioning through and then also push the high days higher. So I, okay. like I have been in the past up to like eight, 900 on a weekend. Okay. Uh, and I would like to be able to do that again. Cause that, that that's quite a nice bit of fun to be able to sort of. Push <laughs> <laughs> so you did a, a small rebound and then back on the diet, back down. Yeah. And your show is in six, seven weeks. Yeah, six and a half, I guess, tomorrow. So, yeah. All right. All right. So, everyone's going to be looking out for you, man. I Listen, I appreciate you coming on. I wanted to get all these things ironed out. And I, like I said, I'm trying to bridge the gap between enhanced and natural. So, cool. uh, maybe we can have you on again after the show and see how things went in your first IFBB pro show. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Is there anything you want to, anybody you want to thank or anything you want to say kind of before we go? Um, Just, I guess, uh, yeah, if just anyone who is interested in like, wants some coaching especially the natural guys um you can drop me a message on my instagram which is bobwires86 or you can email me at robertwaterhouse86 at gmail.com um okay. and yeah obviously i'm happy to uh to have taken on clients currently and i will be capping it so it's kind okay. of okay awesome thank you very much robert i appreciate the time man i appreciate the education and uh, i'll get this right up up right, uh, up right away for everybody awesome great chat to you hey man thank you have a good day cheers Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.